my name is Marcus, uh, and I promise everybody here at Haikyuu doesn't isn't named Marcus. Um, it's just us two, as far as I know. Um, so I wanted to talk to you about uh, something that I've been working on uh, for the last few months, uh, which is Core Bluetooth, and how you can start developing apps um, using uh, Bluetooth peripherals in about 15 minutes and in with about just um, let's say 60 lines of code. So first of all, what is Core Bluetooth? Um, Core Bluetooth is uh, Apple's um, uh, framework that you can use to communicate with uh, Bluetooth low energy devices. So when the Bluetooth 4.0 specification was made, um, it was split it up into three parts. So we have the classic part, which is, which is like, um, like a backwards compatible um, a version of Bluetooth that you can use for all devices. Uh, you have the high speed version that you can use for uh, high speed communication with Bluetooth devices, and then you have the Bluetooth Low Energy, or as it's shortened, BLE. Um, BLE is uh, a little bit different than the other ones. Uh, it's more uh, made for like small novel devices, um, like heart monitors, and um, uh, I've seen glucose meters that uh, di that people with diabetes use um, that have Bluetooth on them, uh, so you can sync your data and stuff. And I also have this um, this little kitchen scale um, that looks like a regular kitchen scale and works as a regular kitchen scale, but it also has uh, Bluetooth on it. So I'm going to show you how you can write a simple app uh, to get uh, the data from this, uh, what you like the um, like the weight of what you put on it uh, into your app, so you can start developing cool apps using uh, more than just your phone. So let's jump into some code uh, right away. Um, so first of all, um, oh sorry, <laughs> is that good enough? Uh, Even bigger? Two more steps. Like that? Okay, one more step. <laughs> Thank you. Good. Okay, cool. Um, so this is a very simple app that I have. Um, all that it is, if we look in the in the storyboard, if it loads. Um, it's just a label on the middle of the screen that shows um, shows the weight. Um, and there's really three uh, classes that you need to know about in Core Bluetooth. That's about it. We have a central manager that you can use to connect to Bluetooth devices. Um, and you have a peripheral um, class that you can use to, which is kind of like a high level abstraction of the, of the peripherals that you're using. And both of them have um, delegate, um, delegate protocols as well. Um, so, uh, so um, we have this delegate uh, protocol that you can use for um, talking to your Bluetooth devices. Uh, and uh, all it is is basically three um, methods that you can implement. Uh, the first one um, is not really that interesting. It just keeps track of the state of the, of the Bluetooth chip. So when you start it up, uh, you you can you can get the state if it's powered on, if it's disconnected, and stuff like that. Um, you have a second method uh, that is called when you discover um, peripherals. So as you can see, this text is pretty big, but but we can just scan for peripherals using the central manager that I talked about earlier. Um, uh, and um, uh, when when the Bluetooth ship finds devices in your vicinity, uh, you're going to get called back into this method um, where you can uh, start using them. So you can connect you, you connect to these peripherals using this delegate, um, and um, it's pretty easy as you can see. It's just um, basically 15 lines of code that you that you write. And you have another delegate that you have to implement. Um, that is uh, for handling the peripheral itself. So, um, as I said, the peripheral is kind of like a um, like a high level abstraction of the uh, of the peripheral that you're trying to use or that you're connected to. Um, so all this does is oh, actually, I I, I forgot a very important slide. I'm sorry. I'm li I'm a little bit nervous. Um, uh, we have a few concepts that we need to know about. So. Every Bluetooth peripheral has two things, uh, has uh, two kind of concepts that you need to know about. Uh, they implement something called a service, um, which is like an uh, like a 
specification of how you can use this device and how you can transfer data to and from it. It also has, uh, every service has some characteristics which you can use to read and write data to the peripheral. So this is what you use, um, for example, in a, in a heart monitor, you can read the, the heart rate and, and stuff like that. Uh, and there's also another version of these characteristics which you call notify characteristics. And these are kind of like um, characteristics that push data from the, um, from the peripheral itself into your app. So this is what we're going to use today uh, to push data from this uh, scale into the app. Um, so if we move back to the code again, uh, you can see that we um, find this peripheral and we try to find all the services on it. Uh, and every service has a specific UUID that you need to know about. Um, and which is pretty cool about this is that if you go to the Bluetooth site, there's a bunch of different characteristics, or uh, sorry, uh, a bunch of different services that is already implemented in the Bluetooth protocol. So chances are that your Bluetooth devices already have one of this. Um, it also leaves room so that you can implement your own services, which this scale has done. So it's not in this specification. But, um, but there's a big list of stuff that you, can, that you can use here. So we scan for services on our peripherals and um, using, using the UUID. Um, so I have just uh, instantiated that up here. Uh, and after that, we can also scan for um, characteristics on, uh, on, the, on the service. And this is what we do here. So we first check if we actually have the service that we're looking for, which has a UUID as I, uh, as I instantiated up here. And you can try to discover its characteristics. And when you do that, you're going to get another callback down in the, the discover characteristics for service um, callback. And this is where um, we can start setting up the communication uh, to the device. So as you can see, we set uh, the notify value to true for the characteristic, and that means that um, if, this, if this device pushes data, uh, we listen for that. Uh, and we have a final uh, method that we implement uh, that is going to get called every time uh, we get a new value um, from the device. So if we put some code in here, um, you can see that um, we get a CB characteristic, which is, uh, which, and we can check a property called value on it, which is a, um, which is a data uh, like the Swift data struct um, that uh, with um, with the bytes uh, that get pushed from the from the uh, from the from the peripheral. Um, so by taking those bytes. Uh, and converting them into an integer, we should be able to figure out um, what, uh, how heavy this stuff that we put on the, on the scale is. So, if I just... Um, oops. So I need to I need to do this. This is a little bit uh, a little bit awkward, but I need to do this uh, since we can't do this in the simulator. We can do a screen oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, yeah, yeah, the other way around. You're right. You're right. Um, movie. Movie. Yeah, you're right. Sorry about that. We've all been there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we have to do this on, on, a, on a physical device. So if we, um, if we compile this code um, for my phone and not for, the, not for the simulator. Okay, there we go. And we start our scale. Oh, 
Oh wow. Um, hmm, okay, this is probably not right. Um, but let's see if we okay if we mess around with the scale, we can see that the that values change at least. So okay, we have some kind of communication here. So what is the issue? Um, these character the issue is that these characteristics usually doesn't just send one thing. They send a lot of data in order to um, in order to optimize the communication. So um, I have the specification for this. Um, oh shit! I didn't. Here. So if we look in the specification that I have here, um, you can usually find these on the on the Bluetooth site uh, since most of these uh, these profiles is already implemented. But in this case. Um, the the manufacturer of the scale uh, choose to um, to implement it their own way. So we have this um, this specification of what it sends out. And if we read this from the top to the bottom, this is the least significant bit that it's going to send out, going to the most significant bit. So we can see that first uh, it sends out four bits of uh, flags. That is just flags uh, about uh, the measurement value. And we're not really interested in that. It's uh, it's a bit of a if if you want to do like uh, higher level stuff than we want to do, uh, and then you can see that it sends out a u int twenty four. Uh, can can everybody see this? It's pretty small, right? I'll zoom in a little, and then we get the measurement value in in grams, and it sends out as u in twenty four. So and then we get a bunch of other data that we're not really interested in uh, after that. So okay, so we know that we have four bits of data that we're not interested in in the beginning, and then we have a bunch of data that we're not interested in. We don't really know how long it is. Um, the cool thing is that since we converted this into an, into an integer, um, we can use bitwise operators. Um, have, have anyone used those before? Yeah. Uh, so we can shift this value eight bits to remove the eight bits in the beginning, the flags, and then by ending it with 0xffffff, which is the uh, hexadecimal value for 24 uh, bits of ones, uh, we should mask away the value that we're actually interested in and leave the other bits as zeros. So if we recompile this, and we'll switch back here. Did I say four bits? Uh, I think it says eight bits, right? <coughs> eight bits, yeah. Um, so if we go back to the app now, we can see that we have zero grams, which uh, is probably right. And if we start messing with the scale, we can see it go up and down. Ooh. And, <laughs> and just to make sure, um, I'll put my phone on here. It says 29 grams, and just to be sure, let's check, let's check with Apple. Uh, it's, just, it's supposed to be, oh, okay, so, so, we're off by, so we're off by one gram. I, I don't think that's, that's because of the Bluetooth implementation. I think that's more because of the scale is, is, is off by one gram. Yeah, the cable, yeah, something. Oh, yeah, right, the cable. It's a SIM card. Yeah, the SIM card, something like that. So, yeah, so... Yeah, uh, yeah, they have probably. <laughs> so yeah, I think this is pretty cool um, because it's not a lot of code, and you can start working with your Bluetooth peripherals. And if you have something at home, like a heart rate monitor or something that uses Bluetooth, chances are that that it's implemented over Bluetooth Low Energy. Uh, so with a little bit of um, of reverse engineering, you can probably make your own apps for all of your Bluetooth peripherals at home, which I think is pretty cool. Um, so that's all I had. Uh, so do we have any any questions? Any questions, Marcus? Yeah. Yeah, so if you have a device like this scale you said was not listed in one of the, as one of the standard mm -hmm. service providers, how yeah. do you go about finding is it just sort of trial and error? Uh yeah, uh since this uh, since the whole Bluetooth specification is open, um you can um 
uh, if you if you saw in the code, I, I searched for services with a special uh, UUID. If you just send in nil there, you should get every um, every device in your vicinity that has Bluetooth. So if I would have done that here, I would probably get like a hundred hits today because all of you have Apple watches and and, and phones. Uh, so um, so you can do that. There's also a few apps on the App Store which is like Bluetooth. Um, uh, Bluetooth um, discovery tools that you can use uh, to discover and uh, see what kind of services are on your devices. So yeah, so that's pretty. It, it's pretty easy since the standard is open to reverse engineer it. If you want to make make this with other stuff that's not in the specifications. Cool. Thanks. Uh, I I don't actually have a question. I have an addendum to your answer. You mm -hmm. can buy uh, a little piece of hardware that will sniff any Bluetooth devices in range and you can actually see the bytes and packets for yeah. anything, even if they're not paired with your device or anything. So, yeah. uh, it's pretty fun to see everybody's text. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it's super easy to implement as well, so yeah. Um, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, so recently I was looking at ways to use the iPad for uh, coding on Xcode. And uh, I found a mouse by Citrix that mm -hmm. could connect to iOS uh, without jailbreaking. How do you think they did that? Um, I'm I, I'm not really sure, but what I think um, I'm not sure I, I'm not really sure how that works. But I know for a fact that there is a, a, a service for uh, human interface devices. So maybe it uses that, or maybe it doesn't use Bluetooth Low Energy at all. Maybe it uses some of the other protocols. Um, because you can access those too, but uh, you can't access them unless you're a verified developer uh, for iOS. Uh, or for, um, for Bluetooth peripherals. I think it was a Bluetooth mouse. Yeah, yeah, uh, and maybe um, you, can, you can, make your, you can uh, use the other, uh, not the Bluetooth Low Energy stuff that we used, you can use the other stuff as well, but then you have to have a special license uh, to use that. So maybe they, maybe they have something like that. Yeah. That would be my guess, at least. But I'm not sure. You said human interface devices. Does that mean that any human interface device could theoretically interact with our iOS devices? Theoretically, yes. But you would have to write code in order to, um, to yeah. If 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 it if it uh, if it um, if it has that service on it, you should be able to 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 use it. But it has to it has to um, uh, to send that service out. Okay. Any more questions? The, I think we have another oh, question. Yeah. yeah. So what were the main shortcomings that you faced? Um. I think I think the hardest the hardest thing is uh, that um, uh, all the data that you get back uh, comes back in in data, which so is bits and bytes. And we did get a new data API in Swift three, I think, uh, which is way better than one we had before. But it's still a little bit um, still still a little bit wonky to work with uh, because you um, uh, because you basically have to uh, to interface directly with the data underneath. So you have to do this uh, bit bit shift uh, stuff and you have to mask stuff uh, and if you have a big characteristic that sends a bunch of data it can take a long time to parse every, sing every single piece out uh, here we just took like what we, what we wanted but if we wanted the flags that would be a big work and then if we wanted the other data that would be big work too so yeah uh, so that's the biggest shortcoming I think uh, the data API could be a little better but still, still better than it was before uh, <laughs> I made my first app in like Swift 2, I think, with this, and uh, it was way worse than, than it is now. All right. Well, then, if anybody else has any questions, I guess you can talk to Marcus afterwards. Yeah, uh, <laughs> and you can find me on pretty much every social media if you have a question, or email me on this email addresses. Or talk to me afterwards. Mm -hmm. So, thank you, Marcus. Yeah, thanks. <laughs>